I'm Alana, and welcome to Button Bash. Bungie's Destiny is probably the biggest game we've seen so far this year, and I've just finished playing it on the Xbox One. I've just finished the main story, that is, being that Destiny is technically an MMO, there's a whole heap of content that's set to be added. It's important to mention this now, because if you're watching this review in six months' time, Destiny could be a very, very different game. Probably a much better one. Hopefully, a much better one. Before being an MMO, Destiny is an FPS, a really efficient FPS. You can have three weapons at any one time. Your primary is a standard weapon, where I favor the assault rifle. Your special weapon is really just a secondary weapon, which is usually like a shotgun or a sniper. And your heavy weapon is a uh, heavy weapon. I went with a rocket launcher because explosions. Ammo drops your primary before anything else, meaning you're forced to favor it over the others in a way that really subtly encourages tactics and preservation. You know you won't get any heavy ammo all that often, so you'll store it. Grenades, on the other hand, recharge. Then there's your special attack, which is different for each of the three classes in the game, and recharges over time and as you kill enemies. The melee, which is assigned to one of the shoulder buttons on a controller, is one of the most satisfying things ever. Probably the most satisfying melee in any game I've played. Something about the timing, the range, the sound, and the visuals are just so perfected that it's a delight every single time. So, for a fairly simple first-person shooter system, the combat itself gives you various things to think about, as well as making you focus on timing and recharging. And thank God for that, since Destiny requires a whole lot of shooting. Nearly every mission requires going somewhere for some nothingness reason, and making your robot friend Ghost, who is very averagely voiced by Peter Dinklage, scan a thing while you fight off a super predictable horde. Like it got to the point that whenever Ghost would be like, oh yo, Warlock bro, I need to scan this console here. I would just immediately scout the room for somewhere appropriate to cover while the game threw the same repetitive thing at me for no real reason. So yeah, while the combat plays in a way that's really hard to floor, all of the actual gameplay is horribly predictable and the story, the story is nothing, it's a void. It's just a very insignificant feature of a game that does a much better job of coaxing you forward with a level system. In Destiny, you level up as you kill enemies and complete missions, which is pretty simple stuff. You can collect bounties from the hub called the Tower, which will give you extra XP if you complete them, as well as strikes and much more recently, raids, which are team-based infiltrations that'll have you face up against extra big bad guys. There's also loot, which comes as new weapons and armor, and engrams, which are like blueprints that have a knack for being super misleading. You get a purple engram, you assume it's going to be a purple item when you take it to be turned into a weapon, which is a legendary. Turns out that really rarely happens and is one of the most frustrating parts of the game. A purple engram can end up being a blue item, which is just rare and isn't nearly half as good. So you'll spend all of this time grinding to get sweet gear and it ends up being extremely anticlimactic. Not the kind of thing you might expect from Diablo, for example, but it's still extremely addictive if you get invested in your character at all. The strikes I found particularly fun though. While they run on the same scan the thing system as all the other missions seem to, they face you up against unique heavy bosses and slot you in with other players. They're tough and really rely on co-op, which is a nice change from the rest of the game. So while Destiny is an MMO, it doesn't feel like one. It feels more like a lifeless FPS with other people just sharing your world. Like two ships passing in the night. They're there, sometimes you dance together, and it's kind of comforting having someone shoot down a few enemy types with you every now and then, but you never feel compelled or invited to team up outside of strikes. But that's because there's actually a matchmaking system that automatically teams you up with other players, which just doesn't happen in other parts of the games. Sometimes I'd invite a friend to join my game, but they'd be rejected for whatever reason. Sometimes I'd try to join a friend, but it'd drop me out. If one person is a much higher level than the other, playing together is kind of pointless and also generally pretty difficult for whoever is the lower level. And I intended to play Destiny's first raid before reviewing it here today, but I just couldn't. For the raid to really be doable, you have to team up with a set of people beforehand. There's no matchmaking. Getting a group of people who are all high enough level to get together and complete a raid that apparently took the first team over 10 hours isn't all that easy, especially for people who work or are studying. It's like the most inaccessible multiplayer game I've ever played. Of course, there is PvP, which functions a whole lot like Halo, except that it's unfortunately unbalanced. The Hunter class seems to absolutely destroy in PvP at this point, and it didn't take long for me to get sick of its special attack taking out an entire room full of people where other classes can't. So that's not much of a positive either. So Destiny is renowned for being an extremely expensive game. Where did all the money go? Aside from the actual mechanics, it's also a very pretty game. The graphics are consistently impressive, enemy AI is remarkably efficient with shielded enemies tactically retreating to restore their shields, and the music itself is more effective than all of the dialogue combined. But even the positives have their own flaws. While the game is gorgeous and the environments are initially really perplexing and inviting, they quickly become shallow. They're there, but you traverse through the same pathways over and over every time you go to a new planet. 
There aren't that many missions and many of them start in the exact same places. None in any of the environments really affect you at all either, they just kind of sit there. They don't really seem alive and it became obvious after a while that all of the planets you can visit were really just the same thing but with slightly different colours. Some other final negatives here because there obviously haven't been enough. The game really lacks personality. It doesn't have any humour or character development in any of the characters present and there's nothing that really makes you think, oh, that's classic Destiny, because nothing is classic Destiny. Because Destiny is the shell that binds every sci-fi universe ever created, except those have more substance in the middle. I do have faith that Bungie's Destiny universe will evolve with feedback as MMOs do, and it's undeniably fun to play if you can look past how repetitive it is, but it isn't the game that Activision promised. Maybe one day. I played Destiny on the Xbox One, though it is also available on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3. Actually with free upgrades from last gen consoles on the new gen consoles if you buy it before the end of this year. I'm Alana and thanks for watching Button Bash.